All right, so it's uh, about five past, so why don't we get this party started? Thank you so much to everybody for joining this webinar about studying and how to finance your studies at the Schulich School of Business. So just to briefly introduce ourselves, my name is Sasha Romani, uh, the head of Canada for Empower Financing. Um, just a fun, uh, fun side note about me is that my father actually moved to Canada after doing an MBA at the Schulich School of Business. So I feel sort of a personal connection with the school over there. But you're not here to hear from me. You're probably more interested in hearing from Jessica. So I will let her introduce herself. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining today. My name is Jessica Morgan. I'm the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Admissions. Uh, my role focuses mainly on the MBA programs here at Schulich and mainly working with international students. So I do see a lot of familiar names in the chat already. So welcome to you all. Um, today we may have a very mixed group from undergraduate to graduate and, and PhD potential candidates as well. So thank you for joining today to learn more. That's great. Well, thank you so much for that introduction, Jessica. So today we're going to be talking quickly about studying in Canada broadly. Jessica's going to be talking about the, school, the Schulich School in particular. I will then talk about Empower and how we can help you finance your education at Schulich. We'll talk a little bit about our Path to Success program and scholarships, and we'll have plenty of time for questions as well. By the way, this webinar is being recorded, so if any of you have questions afterwards, don't hesitate. I just don't worry about taking notes about what's on the slides because we will send all of that out afterwards. So without further ado, just very quickly about studying in Canada. Canada today has over half a million students from around the world studying at some of the top schools that we have in Canada. And a couple of reasons why Canadian education is becoming increasingly attractive is Firstly, there are some very high quality schools in Canada, such as the Schulich School of Business and York University in general. There's also a very friendly visa and study permit process, especially when you compare to some other countries. For example, there's generally no need to visit an embassy. Students can generally get a three-year work permit after graduation. And if so desired, students can generally have a pretty easy path to permanent residency and citizenship. We also broadly have a, we Canadians have a nice reputation around the world as being compassionate and tolerant to folks coming from all around the world. So students from essentially any country around the world can find a home for themselves in Canada, not only while they're studying, but after graduating as well. So that's really quickly about Canada, and I will let Jessica introduce the Schulet School to all of you. Thanks, Sasha. Um, so as, as all of you know, a little bit about us at least, the Schulich School of Business is located in Toronto, Canada. Uh, we are a part of York University, which is the third largest university of Canada, and it is a public institution. Uh, so we are the business faculty of York University. Uh, Sasha, if you want to go to the next slide, thank you. Uh, so first I'll talk a little bit about our undergraduate programs. As I mentioned today, we actually have uh, a wide variety of students on the call. So you may be an undergraduate candidate, you may be a graduate candidate. So I'm just gonna briefly touch on each of the types of programs that we have. Uh, so in the undergraduate programs, we have both the Bachelor of Business Administration and the International Bachelor of Business Administration. So these are four year degree programs uh, for undergraduate students coming directly out of high school. Uh, we are looking for uh, very top achieving students in both academics and extracurricular involvement. Um, those are the, the real qualifications that make a very strong applicant. Um, so, you know, you do have to have a combination of both of those things. The difference between our two programs is that the IBBA focuses more on international business and students will have some international focus where they're going to be uh, learning a language, they're going to be going on an exchange program as well internationally to get that further exposure. Um, and a lot of our programs do have the global focus, uh, but for the undergraduate programs, these are the two that we offer. Uh, and they're, they're very competitive, but uh, very fantastic programs as well. Okay, and moving on to our graduate programs, we have a lot of breadth here in what is offered. And first of all, I'll start with the MBA programs that we offer. 
Um, so we do have our regular MBA program, which is a two-year program. Uh, the international MBA, similar in structure to the MBA, it does start in September each year, but we're looking for candidates that have an interest in international business, that have at least two languages. There is a second language component for that. Uh, and for international students, you will have a work term here in Canada. Uh, in the MBA program, we also have the opportunity for a work term. Uh, if you are a candidate that is logging in today from India, you might also want to consider our MBA in India program. Uh, it's, you know, the same courses taught by the Toronto professors, but we fly them out to India. The first year is done in our campus in Hyderabad, and the second year is done in Toronto. So that's a small cohort that does a dual economy degree, getting the best of both worlds of India and Canada. Uh, if you have an interest in law, we have a fantastic MBA JD program, which is done in collaboration with our Osgood Hall Law School here at York University. That's a four-year program, so a little bit more of an investment in your both time and finances there. Uh, and if you are a uh, somebody who's got a background in the arts, uh, either a Master of Arts or Master of Fine Arts combined program might be for you as well. Those would be three-year programs combining uh, from our Faculty of Arts, which is called uh, AMPD, Arts, Media, Performance, and Design here at York University, and the Schuwitz School of Business MBA programs. Okay, so when it comes to our master's programs, we have eight different specialized master's programs that are available. These are typically one-year programs. Uh, so you'll be doing 12 months of intensive training in a subject area to become a, a subject matter expert here. We do have offerings in accounting, business analytics, finance, a master of management in artificial intelligence, which is a, a fantastic new, uh, very tech heavy, but business focused program uh, for candidates that have that sort of technical background, but want to learn how to uh, you know, manage businesses in this field. Uh, our master of management program is specifically geared towards students that graduated from degrees which are not business degrees. So anyone uh, that studied engineering or science or humanities are welcome to apply for that program as long as you have less than two years of work experience. Anyone with over two years of work experience who's looking for a general business degree should be considering the MBA programs instead. Uh, our Master of Marketing is a, a relatively new program that has just taken off and is doing fantastically well. Uh, so again, it's a one-year program that's going to give you uh, deep insights into a lot of digital marketing trends and topics. Uh, and the students in that program actually take over the editorial board of one of a, a digital marketing magazine, which is really a really fantastic opportunity as well. Uh, Master of Real Estate and Infrastructure is more geared towards people who are already working in this industry but want to advance their leadership in the industry. So two to five years of work experience is recommended for this program within the uh, industry of real estate or infrastructure backgrounds. And last, we have the Master of Supply Chain Management. Uh, so definitely lots of popularity in this program, uh, especially these days with lots of companies having very international supply chains. Uh, it's uh, logistics is becoming a bigger and bigger industry here in Canada with lots of North American multinationals headquartered here, which are uh, dealing with their international supply chain uh, for their companies. So really a great program to get you more involved in the logistics and supply chain area there. Uh, and lastly, we have a PhD in administration. So there are various number of topics that you can do in that program. Um, but uh, it is a more research based program that we have all of our graduate studies programs, including the MBA and the master's programs are more practice and theory combined. They're not research based programs like a PhD. And then we'll lastly here, talk a little bit about Toronto. Uh, so Toronto is a really fantastic place to live. It has been ranked the second best city in North America for quality of living. It's got a huge economy with every kind of uh, industry and organization that you could imagine. The startup industries are, are very strong here. There's a lot of startup culture, especially at Schulich. Uh, 
so you can find very niche, very unique uh, startup businesses, and you can find very international, um, you know, world-class multinational corporations, which are headquartered here in Toronto. Um, so the really interesting thing about Toronto itself is 51% of our population was actually born outside of Canada. This is very diverse. You'll be able to hear all sorts of different languages spoken when you're walking down the streets in Toronto. You can get food from any region around the world, which is what I love. And it's a very rich uh, arts and culture uh, and community oriented city. Uh, so I think it's a really wonderful place to live. So when it comes to coming to study in Toronto and studying at Schulich, there's a couple of benefits that you should know about as an international student. Uh, so you can actually work part time while you're studying. You can work up to 20 hours a week uh, during your main course work semesters. Anytime you have a break or holiday, you can up that to your full time hours. Uh, if you do have a summer off, such as in the MBA program, you can work full time on an internship during that time. Depending on how long your program is, that will determine how long your working permit is. So typically, if you are doing a one year program, uh, it's generally, uh, you know, uh, expected that you're going to get a one year working permit. If you have a two year program or longer, you could get up to three years of a working permit. Uh, as Sasha mentioned, there is immigration pathways and we do actually have immigration and visa support within the office at Schulich. So we do have uh, our own immigration advisor here. She actually works in the office right next to me. She holds regular information sessions for students on how to apply for your study permit, how to apply for your work permits, uh, if you're considering PR, what are the processes and uh, requirements that are needed for that. Um, we also offer some programs to help students acclimatize to their life here in Toronto. So there are buddy programs where we match new incoming international students up with students who are uh, in their second year or who have been here for a while and, and already are uh, used to life in Canada. And we also have new to Canada orientations to help you understand those unique Canadianisms that you might not be familiar with uh, and to help you figure out the location uh, where we're situated, where you can go on campus to find the things that you need and what types of uh, services and supports are available to you here. So as you become a Schulich student, you would be joining a fantastic global alumni network. Um, so we have over 31,000 alumni working in 90 countries around the world. Uh, and actually they're very, very active. We have 93 global alumni chapters that are active in 62 different countries. So no matter if you end up staying in Canada, or you end up in another country around the world, you'll always have somebody that you can connect with from that Schulich network. Uh, our students and our alumni are very, very active and engaged. We have a mentorship program, which is really great to give current students the chance to connect with an alumni in the industry or organizations that they're interested in working with. Um, so we do find a lot that our alumni give back in terms of their time, uh, their resource and their support to current students to really help them succeed. So I think you're joining a wonderful community or considering joining a wonderful community. Uh, and uh, we hope that you would take advantage of these opportunities as well throughout your time at Schulich. Thank you so much, Jessica. I'm going to talk to you briefly about how Empower Financing to help you finance your education at the Schulich School of Business. So very quickly, we offer education loans and scholarships to students from around the world to help them study at top schools like the Schulich School of Business. And we do this because we genuinely believe as a firm that socioeconomic mobility should be borderless. And we believe in this because we are a very international crowd ourselves. Our team consists of folks from, uh, from over a dozen countries. We collectively speak over 20 languages. So we, and we're, we're a firm who was a, which was essentially founded by and mostly run by former international students. And I count myself among that as well. I'm a former international student myself. So very quickly, um, we get asked a lot of common questions like why is it so difficult to get a loan from a bank? And when, when it's possible to get a loan from a bank even, 
why does it take so much paperwork and why does it take so much running around? So to help address these questions, Empower was founded as, we like to say, a 21st century loan product for international students. And we don't require any co-signer, collateral, or credit history for students from around the world. We provide funding of up to 50,000 US dollars. That's about 67,000 Canadian dollars for loans that are about 12 and a half years in length. These loans can cover tuition, housing, meals, or any other education related expense you might have. And we only charge fixed interest rates, which means that your rates don't go up over time. But we offer lots of interest rate discounts. So while your rates don't go up over time, they can definitely go down. And I will talk about that in a little bit. We also um, help students to develop a credit profile in the US and Canada. And because credit profile is really important to help you get set up in Canada, not only while you're in school, but after you graduate as well. And part of that process is helping to provide support with immigration. Just just talked about how, how um, Shula provides support for immigration after graduation, but we also help students to obtain a study permit and some additional help with immigration after graduation as well. And one thing a lot of students ask me about is, what if I want to pay off the loan early? We say, no problem. Let's say as soon as you graduate with your Shula degree, you're getting a great job in Toronto, you want to pay off that loan, no problem, no penalties, no cost to pay early. We want you to be successful, and that's part of how we help set up students for success, not only in school, but after graduation as well. We were rated the number one student loan provider for international students, not only in 2019, but in 2020 as well. That's very new, so I haven't updated the slide yet. So I'm gonna tell you how Empower is great, but you don't have to listen to me. You can listen to NerdWallet, which has rated us independently, and same with the US News and World Report. So we like to say that we're better, easier, and cheaper than some other options. And I'll dive deeply, quickly into each of these. We say we're better because we don't require any collateral or co-signer or anything else. We don't restrict what you can study. So Jessica mentions loads of different degree programs at Shulet, and we can cover every single one of those degree programs. And as I mentioned, any education-related expense as well, including off-campus housing, meals, insurance, and so on as well. And we offer a lot of additional services like flexible payment terms, building a credit profile, and career support as well. We are a pretty easy solution to work with because it's an easy and quick online application. It's easy to upload documents or maybe just take a photo with your phone. Um, and the whole process, if, if, you, if you do it quickly, can take as little as half an hour online. And finally, we're cheaper than a lot of other financing options. Um, our, our fixed interest rate loans are from 10.49%. There are loads of fees that we don't charge that other firms may charge. And we're pretty transparent about our rates and our fees as well. And finally, because our loans are denominated in US dollars, it means that generally our students are protected against currency depreciation because the Canadian dollar and US dollar are tied very closely together. Uh, just very quickly on why fixed interest rate loans are better for students. And fundamentally, this is because we, we believe in making a product that's helpful for students. So it essentially means that students are protected against the risk that interest rates may rise over time. If prevailing LIBOR interest rates rise, your rates do not rise. Your monthly payments do not change over time. They are predictable, helps you with budgeting, and again, it's all part of how we like to work with students and, to, and we've tried hard to develop a loan solution that has students' interests in mind. And as I mentioned as well, we offer lots of nice interest rate discounts. And when I say discounts, every single one of you is eligible for these. These are not discounts that are sort of teaser rates, but every single one of you can get these. The first discount, sign up for automatic payments. So you can do that on day one, do it right away and lock in that discount. Wait six months on auto payments, you get another discount. So again, it's super easy. And as soon as you graduate from Shulik, you get a great job as a Shulik education will help you to attain, you get another discount. So that's, that's just quick, a quick overview of how we offer about 1.5% of interest rate discounts. It adds up. It's a, it's a lot you can save at the end. And it's pretty easy for all of you to get these discounts 
very quickly. And um, we have lots of testimonies from students just like yourselves. There are more on our website, so I'd invite you to read those as well. But we've supported thousands of students from well over 100 countries around the world to help them study abroad, and we would love to help support many of you as well. Let's talk quickly about our Path to Success and scholarship programs. So we offer lots of scholarships and the list is constantly changing. So I just recommend looking at our website. I think last year we offered over $100,000 worth of scholarships and probably even more in 2020. So I'd invite you to look at all of these uh, scholarships because you might be eligible for some but not others. For example, women in STEM, uh, STEM degree stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. So at Schulich, the Master of Management and in Artificial Intelligence program would qualify for that. If we look at the Global Citizen Scholarship, every degree program is eligible. So it's, it's worthwhile looking at our website to see which scholarships you're eligible for and maybe sign up for scholarship alerts too so you could be notified when a new scholarship becomes available. Uh, here are the recipients of uh, some of our Global Citizen uh, Scholarship winners last year. We have Rohit from India, Crystal or Haoyan from China, and Fernanda from Brazil. We also offer a lot of free career services for all of our students, like career prep, resume reviews, practice interviews, networking support, and we help students to find job and internship opportunities as well. Of course, Schulich has a fantastic career center. You should definitely see what they have to offer, but it doesn't hurt to give our services a whirl as well. So that's it for me. Um, I'm happy to take any questions you have, and I'm sure Jessica would be as well, but our contact information is available on the slide as well. So if you don't get to ask a question today, you can always, uh, you can always ask it later on. Thank you, Sasha. I'll just mention that um, today we're, we're focusing mainly on questions around funding your degree at Schulich. So uh, if you're looking for admissions related questions, I would encourage you to check our website at schulich.yorku.ca. Uh, all of our programs and the admissions requirements are listed there. Uh, so we're happy to, to go over any questions that you guys might have related to the topic of today's uh, session. That sounds great. Thank you so much for clarifying. So if you have any questions, you can please uh, enter them in the chat. I see many of you have started asking questions already, so I'll try to pit them and sorry if I miss it because there's a lot of comments in the chat so far. The first question I'm going to take is that, um, is there a grace period? And I'd say fundamentally, yes. So we, um, we sort of divide the loan into three stages. There's in school grace period and there's after grace period of after graduation. So we ask for optional interest-only payments while in school. And I should emphasize these payments are optional, but we highly recommend it because it means that the interest is not adding up. And it means you can, de you can develop a credit profile while making those payments too. So we highly recommend making those um, optional in-school and grace period payments. But again, if you can't or if you choose not to, we can work with you. We, can, we have other options available as well. A uh, question about the uh, about uh, the interest rate. Once a so if a graduate student qualifies for all those three interest rate discounts, the net result will be a ten point four nine percent annual interest rate. A lot of questions about uh, whether you're eligible if you qualify. I think the easiest thing to do would be to just very quickly look at our um, go to our website and just check your eligibility. It takes about thirty seconds to do so. And I just recommend doing that. You can confirm that, yes, York University, uh, excuse me, yes, York University, yes, the Shula School of Business are eligible schools. Confirm that your country is eligible, which almost definitely will be because basically every country is eligible. The whole process takes about 30 seconds. And I will just note that this is intended primarily for international students. So if you are PR, I noticed a question there, you're considered a domestic student. So you would be eligible for different types of funding uh, through the university, through the government of Canada, um, than international students would be. So this uh, would be particularly for the international students who would be applying for a student visa to come and study at Schulich. 
That's right, but we actually do support permanent residents as well. So if you are a PR, we're more than happy to uh, help fund your education as well. But PRs do tend to have other options available and we do recommend looking at all options that you can. Fantastic. Uh, the questions about, I guess, uh, admissions and such. Uh, if you apply for a loan immediately, you can apply for a loan after you get admission. A lot of people look before they get admission as well. It doesn't hurt to get the process started, but at some point you will need an offer of admission to 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 finalize the the loan process. Um, some questions about whether we cover schools in other countries as well. We only cover schools in the US and Canada, but again, the easiest thing to be would be just to confirm your eligibility on our website. You can make sure, um, and that's the easiest way to confirm whether you are eligible for a loan. Uh, so some questions about the APR. So APR, just to, just to define it for everybody, APR stands for annual percentage rate. It's, a, it's basically a government mandated calculation such that you can all confirm that, um, that there aren't, that, that with all fees and such uh, attached that you're able to compare financial products. And that's, that's across whether you're looking for a student loan or a mortgage or an auto loan, it's good to compare APR. And I'd say that um, the APR for Empower, um, I, I don't want to talk about any one specific case, it does include um, uh, we, we do offer, for example, we do charge, for example, a small origination fee only after the loan is dispersed. And it does consider all the interest rate discounts that you might have available as well. And I'd say there's some questions too about our loan maximum. Um, one thing to keep in mind, we do offer uh, our maximum loan amount is 50,000 US dollars. Um, just to clarify, that's a US dollar maximum. That's approximately 67,000 Canadian dollars. So that's something to factor in when you're comparing it to the cost of your education. Sasha, I'll just ask you to clarify perhaps uh, in terms of the loan disbursement. Uh, so you're dispersing the loan directly to the student because you're covering other uh, things at more than tuition or are you dispersing the loan directly to the school? I think people are interested in that. Yeah, that's a great question. So all of our loans are dispersed directly to the school and that helps to save a lot of time and effort. We have a great relationship with the finance folks at York University and the folks at the York University back office are then happy to help students to, to, uh, to use those funds for housing and other expenses as required. Thank you. Um, there's some questions about if I'm a student from Nigeria or any other country. Again, yes, yes, Nigerian students are eligible. Just please confirm that very quickly on our website, it takes only about 30 seconds. So you can do it while I'm talking. <laughs> um, there's a question about global citizen scholarship eligibility and uh, if you should have a study permit. I'd say fundamentally, if you are an international student at a school that we cover, which includes Schulich, then yes, you should be eligible for that scholarship. But again, every, uh, every scholarship has a little bit different eligibility criteria and that should be listed on our website. Uh, there's a question about whether you can cover loans for the first year or second year or both. And I'd say both. If you need a loan for your first year, we can help you for your first year. If you don't need a loan for your first year, only need for your second year or second semester, that's no problem at all. Uh, there's a question about our loan maximums, and I'd say the only question, the only thing there is to, uh, if you complete an application, we can tell you what your maximum loan amount is. For example, if you only need a loan for twenty-five thousand, then you only need one for twenty-five thousand, and that's no problem at all. Uh, there's a question about our application process, and I think I had a slide earlier. I might have skipped over that point, but. If you look at the left side over here, we describe our process as 3033, and that it takes 30 seconds to check your eligibility, about 30 minutes to complete an application. Some students do it quicker, some students do it longer, and that's fine. And we generally make decisions in about three business days. So 
and if you need if you need to do a little bit quicker, we can uh, we can help you out with that. But um, the, the I guess the key thing is that as long as you're clear about what you need and when your deadlines are, then we can try to move as quick as possible. But three business days is pretty quick as well. Uh, there's a question about whether we fund master's degrees. And uh, yes, absolutely. We actually mostly fund master's degrees. Uh, but today we fund, I believe, every degree program at the Schulich School. Oops. Let's go back to that last slide. Um, there's a question about loan cancellation policies, uh, and yes, if you decide you're approved but you don't need the loan, then just let us know and we can cancel it and you will not be charged anything for that. Um, question about interest rates. All of our rates are yearly. They're all annual, so um, that should help to save you a little bit of money. Couple of questions about is my school eligible or is my country eligible? Easiest thing uh, once again would just be to please go to our website, empowerfinancing.com. It takes only about 30 seconds to check it. I don't know about every school on the top of my head, but I would invite you to just spend about 30 seconds checking that online. Uh, same idea for our scholarships. Uh, some folks are asking for our scholarships. Every scholarship's a little bit different, so I would invite you to please look at our website and check some of the rules. For example, some scholarships might only be for women or for folks studying specific things. Um, so I, I just recommend looking at the particular scholarship on our website. Uh, there's a question about our origination fee. So we charge a 5% origination fee on every loan. It is not a processing fee. There's an important distinction there. It is paid back slowly over the life of your loan. Um, there's a question about the best way to contact us. Uh, yes, email is a, is a good way. We also were pretty responsive on the phone. You have our phone numbers there in Canada and India. And for those of you in China, we have a WeChat account as well. So please don't hesitate to message us on there. Uh, Sasha, there was a question from Abhimanyu and also from Taslima before about what if your degree costs more than that amount? And maybe I'll talk a little bit about um, some other options students can consider as well, um, especially when it comes to the MBA program. That's what I'll talk about mainly here because that's uh, the programs that I oversee. Um, but in general, uh, things to consider as well for other options of funding are that you're going to be able to work part time throughout your studies. Uh, that's mainly up to 20 hours per week and then full time during any breaks or holidays or, uh, you know, times between semesters. So that's going to be able to give you a little bit of uh, living expenses, but it's not going to cover everything. Um, so in addition to your, your student loan, you should also be thinking about, you know, what savings do you have? Can your family help you to contribute? Uh, that type of thing as well. The school also maintains a list of external scholarships. Uh, things like Government of Canada, other private organizations that offer scholarships that we can share uh, with our admitted students as well to help them look at further options to uh, potentially apply for external scholarships. Uh, but uh, definitely the, the, some of the degrees are definitely more expensive than the total amount offered. Uh, so you may have to look into other options as well to make up the balance of the, the remainder of the fees. That's absolutely right. Thank you so much for, for providing that color. So as Jessica mentioned, there are several sources of funding available in addition to an Empower loan, whether it is part-time work or scholarships. And I think regardless, all students should, um, should be careful to consider all sources of funding. Oh, uh, there's a question about uh, whether the Master of Management in Artificial Intelligence is covered. And yes, we cover every degree program at the Schulich School of Business. And actually, the MMAI is a fantastic program. Uh, I'm sure Jessica can talk more about it, but those students are, uh, uh, it's a new program, but I'm sure students there will go on to 
fantastic things afterwards. Yeah, there is a question if we offer something in uh, risk and compliance in governance. Uh, we don't have a program on that in the Schulich School of Business, but York University may offer something like that uh, through our Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies. Uh, we have a finance degree in risk management can be your specialization, but uh, it's, it's not exactly on what you're looking for, uh, Syed, I think. So there are a couple more questions about sort of, uh, uh, I just need low nuances. Uh, firstly, um, there's a question about can you apply for a loan in your second year? Yes, absolutely. First year or second year or both or neither. That's no problem at all. Do we cover PhDs? Yes, again, every degree program at the Schulich School. Questions about application, application uh, deadlines. That's an interesting question. I just recommend, we generally recommend starting early in case we have questions about your application. That way we get it in before your tuition due date. I'd say we don't have any deadlines, but York University and the Schulich School will have deadlines based on when they want your tuition to be paid. So I'd say as long as you're adhering to those deadlines, we can help to work with you. Yeah, I'll just add that um, you know, when you're applying for your study permit, you are going to need to show uh, proof of funding for your degree. So it's definitely better to uh, apply for a loan and any other scholarships very early in the process so that you can have that information with you when you're ready to apply for your study permit, that you're able to say, you know, this is where my funding is coming from. I'm going to be able to cover the cost of tuition and living expenses through this variety of different areas. And and the Empower loan being potentially one of them. Um, I am getting some notes on, on asking if I can help students via email. I will just let you know that the admissions email is on the page here uh, on the screen. So if you have any questions about admissions to Schulich programs, about your application, you can definitely check out the website, schulich.yorku.ca. All of the program admission requirements are there. And we also have an events page of other uh, online sessions that we host, which are more program specific and admission specific. Uh, so I'll just direct you to check the Schulich website for our events page or email us at admissions at schulich.yorku.ca if you are a potential graduate student. Uh, if you're a potential undergraduate student, um, which I'm not sure there are many on today, but just in case, the email that you would reach out to would be undergrad at schulich.yorku.ca. Thank you so much for clarifying that, Jessica. Um, I, I just want to chime in again on the, on the whole study permit and immigration process. So for those of you who um, are going through the study permit process, you do need to show proof of funding. And an Empower loan acceptance letter is, it absolutely does count as that proof of funding. We've actually, uh, we've had no issues of students who have been declined a study permit for lack of funding because our letters are pretty strong and not controversial. There was a question here uh, from Kamla about a, a scholarship that we are participating in, which is through the Government of Canada um, for certain countries, which is called Study in Canada Scholarship. Um, so for that, it's uh, very separate. You need to first be admitted and then the school will apply on your behalf. But we are on very tight timelines. So the application is only until March. Um, so you do have to be admitted to a program before that time. Um, but in terms of timelines of your study permit application, thinking about applying in June and July for a September start program may be too late for you. I would encourage you to check Immigration Canada's website. They do list the study permit processing times for every country. Um, it is general though, so we can't always guarantee that if you look up your country's timeline and it only says four weeks, that that's exactly what it's going to take because it does depend on volumes, on processing time, uh, and on the time of the year. So uh, for instance, if you are uh, looking up your country's processing time and it says four weeks, that's four weeks from the time that you have everything prepared. So that means you might have to take a medical test. You might have to prepare uh, other documentation. And those things do take time. So uh, we want you to apply for your program as early as possible, uh, hopefully gain admission as early as possible. This is why we always recommend for international students to apply within round one or round two of the admissions deadlines for the program of your choice. That's a great point. That's a great point. 
I'm getting a couple of questions, uh, I guess privately, so you, uh, the rest of you might not be able to see it on whether paying interest only, the interest only optional payments that we asked for are, it basically is deducted from your total principal payment. And the answer is yes. Um, as I mentioned, we do request optional interest only payments. Again, they're optional, but we definitely recommend it for students. It's in your interest to make those payments. And one of the reasons is that if you choose to defer those payments, then it means that after you graduate, there's a higher loan amount that needs to be paid off. So there are several benefits to making interest only payments in school, but one of them is that the total, the interest does not accumulate while you're in school. There's a question here about the GMAT. I might answer that. So yeah. some of our programs require the GMAT. Some of our programs do not. Uh, so if your program requires the GMAT, yes, you do need to take it because you, we cannot give you an admissions decision before that's been received. Um, so it would be an important part of the application process to your degree. Uh, and then once you have your admission to your degree, that's the point where you can uh, sort of apply for the loan. Uh, you may be able to get, uh, as Sasha mentioned, you know, pre-approval or, or some information by filling out the details online. Uh, but GMAT, if it's required for your program, you would need to submit it before your uh, admission can be confirmed. And uh, actually very similar questions. A lot of folks are asking when the right time to apply for a loan is. I'd say you can apply before you're admitted or after you're admitted. It doesn't really matter. I mean, if you're applying before you're admitted, that's, that's great. But to, to finish the application, we will at some point need a letter of admission or proof that you're currently enrolled if you are already enrolled. A question about tax deductibility. I don't believe that private student loans for any firm are deductible in Canada, um, unfortunately, but I'd recommend talking to a tax expert to confirm that. There are a couple uh, admission specific questions that I'll get to here. Uh, so Timmy Topi is asking, second round has ended, can one still apply? It depends. Uh, so there's no clear cut answer. We have to look at uh, the application volumes that we have already, uh, the timelines for your study permit processing from your country, are there still seats left? Um, so it is highly encouraged for international students to apply by round two. Uh, but if you're thinking uh, round three is coming up for my program and I still want to submit my application, please make sure that you have everything that you need for your application. If it requires GMAT or GRE, if it requires you to have IELTS or TOEFL, that you have all those details ready uh, because they would be required uh, for your application if the program requires it. So for instance, MBA, you absolutely need to have your GMAT and your IELTS or TOEFL if you have not studied in English. Um, you can apply with your unofficial scores. Uh, and then if you are admitted, then we would eventually need your official scores from your IELTS, your TOEFL, your GMAT or GRE, and then your official transcripts as well to be sent from your university. Uh, if you've applied and you're not sure about, uh, you know, is my application complete? Uh, I see some boxes unchecked. Uh, there's a question about this. Uh, you should have already an email from your recruiter. So you can reach out to them if you have any questions. Uh, because when you start your application, automatically you'll get a contact from the recruiter directly. Uh, so please reach out to them directly or reach out to admissions at shulik.yorku.ca. Uh, Jessica, there were some questions asked as well, um, asking for some more detail on the part-time work opportunities. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, so students are allowed to work, international students are allowed to work part-time. You're not allowed to work full-time unless you're on a break. Uh, so that's a requirement of your study permit that your fir focus first and foremost is study and then you can work to help support your your day-to-day -day costs um, but i think it's a little more flexible with the hours if you're working on campus versus working off campus but please do check the immigration canada website for the details around those working uh, opportunities one-year master students mba students bba students all are eligible to work part-time i wish to clarify too that um, one of the nice things about canada is that when you work part-time, it doesn't have to be at the university itself. You can find part-time employment off campus as well, which is actually very different from a lot of other countries. So that's one thing, that's one way Canada makes it easier uh, to, for foreign students to earn a little bit while they're in school as well. 
Absolutely. And I'll just mention as well, as I said at the start, we're part of the third largest university in Canada. There are a lot of opportunities for students to work on campus. And I think that it's, uh, you know, a lot more flexible if you're working on campus because your employer knows that your studies are number one and they're a little more flexible with schedules and it's easier for you to get from work to school. Um, so that's kind of one of the benefits to consider working on campus, but absolutely, as Sasha mentioned, it's not, um, you know, the only option. You can work anywhere, actually. Uh, there's a question about GMAT scores. Uh, yes, you can apply with your unofficial scores that you get on the test date. Uh, and then later on, if you're admitted, you need to send us the official scores. Uh, question again about on campus part time jobs. Once you become a student and you confirm your offer, you'll get a student ID number and you'll get access to the student resources at the university. So you'll be able to log into the uh, on campus job boards, the listings that both the university uh, at a whole and that Schulich provides. Uh, so then you can find opportunities to work on campus through those job boards that are available to our students. Uh, there, there are a few questions coming now in terms of uh, loan terms or repayment amounts and such. I'd say um, the easiest thing again would just be to first of all confirm your eligibility on our website. It takes about 30 seconds. Um, we also have a lot of pretty clear information there on loan terms and interest rates. We're pretty clear and transparent about all that sort of stuff. About total repayment amount, that really depends on how long you keep the loan for. A lot of our students, so while our loans are technically uh, from 10 to 12 years in length, a lot of students will, as soon as they graduate, they get a great job in downtown Toronto, for example, they'll pay off the loan right away. And if you can do that, that's great. Of course, there's no charge or penalty to, to, penalty to do so. And that reduces the total repayment amount because you're saving on interest. Some students don't want to or can't do that, and that's no problem at all. So it all depends on your individual circumstances. I'd recommend uh, reaching out to a member of our team to talk more specifically about what a plan might look like for you. So there's a question about IELTS as well, and I'll just get to that. Um, so for anyone who does require IELTS, uh, you can send us your unofficial scores. Uh, for the meantime, uh, actually IELTS is the one test that we're, we're able to easily verify ourselves. So as long as you're sending us the copy of the results, which includes your TRF number, your test report form number, uh, then we can verify that. But eventually, you know, you would be able to, or required to send official IELTS uh, through the IELTS office, uh, and you can indicate you look as one of the receiving schools. Um, Yeah, that's, uh, as I think, the, the mostly details about IELTS and, and GMAT. You can apply with your unofficial scores, but if you are admitted, we will need the official copies to be sent. Question about foreign offices. While we do have an office in, uh, in Bangalore, India, we do recommend just phoning in. Um, we, we're, we're basically a, a fully online firm. So for any questions, easiest thing would be to, to phone in or message us on email or we chat or whatever, other, whatever else your preferred means is. And there's a question about official transcripts, and I'll just clarify this because a lot of students are, are unfamiliar with what we mean by that. Um, so when you apply, you can upload a copy of your transcript. You can uh, you know, take a screenshot of your student uh, record and use that for the application. But if you are admitted, you need to get a sealed official transcript from your university. Uh, if it's in English, then either you can have your school mail it to us or they can give you the sealed copy and you can mail it or bring it yourself. If your transcripts are in another language, uh, you would need to get two official transcripts from your school. One you keep in a sealed envelope and the other you give to a certified translator who will translate that copy into English. 
and then seal it in its own envelope. So eventually you will give to us uh, two official transcripts, one the original from the school in its native language and one the sealed uh, official translation. Uh, so that's required once you are admitted. And Eva, I think you are admitted already to the MBA, if I remember correctly. Um, so congratulations to anybody uh, on the call today who's already been admitted. Uh, we really look forward to having you join us here at Shule. Congratulations. Um, so uh, if there are any other questions around uh, admissions requirements, I can help the best I can uh, at the moment. But again, admissions at shulip.yorku.ca or emailing your recruiter who you've been uh, liaising with already is probably the best way to get your questions answered. Well, there are a couple of questions coming in about co-signer requirements. I should clarify that Empower does not need a co-signer. We don't look at a co-signer. We look at you and your education and where you're going. That also means that we don't offer discounts for anyone who does have a local co-signer. Uh, we, so, um, yeah, so as I'm sorry, even if you do have someone to co-sign, that's not something that we uh, offer any credit for. Um, I've got a couple of questions too about using loans for air tickets, and I don't believe we can use uh, we, that we can use an Empower loan for an air ticket. When I say educational related expense, it generally means tuition, housing, insurance, meal plans, uh, but not travel. There's a question from someone about uh, if your IELTS result is a little bit lower than the required score, can you still apply? It would depend how much lower. Um, so if you're very, very close, uh, maybe one of your bands is only 0.5 below, or, or if you did TOEFL, it's, it's one point below, or the overall is only 0.5 below, you may still be able to apply. Um, it depends. If your overall is 5.5, you're not yet at the level required to join a program here. Um, 7.0 is our overall requirement. Uh, so I would say think about delaying a little bit to focus a little bit more on improving your English language proficiency. Uh, and then once you are much closer at about a 6.5 overall, then you can start the application process for the next available intake for your program of choice. Um, we do want to make sure everybody is at the required level to make sure that they're going to be successful in the program and they're not going to be struggling with the language component because our programs are very intensive. Uh, you are required to do a lot of writing, to do a lot of public speaking. So it's really important that your English skills are up to that minimum requirement. So I think we've answered all or almost all the questions that have come in. Just a reminder that if any of you folks have any questions afterwards, either for the Schulet School or for Empower, all of our contact information is on the slide. Thank you so much for everybody participating today. I hope we were able to answer uh, a lot of the questions that you have about how to fund your degree here at Schulet, or at least one of the options available, uh, which is a good thing to consider, student loan through Empower. Um, if you have questions, please contact your recruiter. If you have not yet applied, you can check out our website for the admissions requirements information or email the admissions email on the screen to get more information. Thank you everybody for participating and thank you Jessica for helping to make this a fantastic webinar as well. Thank you so much. Take care everyone and good luck to everyone.